Well, hey there, everybody. I am going to do another chatty discussion type video. We're going to see how it goes because I'm pretty sleepy, pretty tired. Hopefully this makes sense and doesn't become a big rambly non-linear mess. Ah, here we go. So booktube has been all abuzz with discussions of competitiveness and pressure to do all the things on booktube and I thought I would contribute a bit to this discussion but only on one specific topic and that topic is readathons which I have a bit of a love-hate relationship with readathons. I finally am accepting it that I have things I love about them and things that I really don't love about them and therefore I probably won't be participating in tons of them, at least not in the, you know, immediate future. So what do I love about readathons? There are lots of things. First of all, I just really love how readathons bring the community together and create really interesting dialogues and fun conversations and a supportive environment where everybody's cheering each other on to complete the challenges if there are challenges. I just really enjoy that aspect of readathons. It's in fact why I started making videos on booktube because I was competing. See, I even was going to say because I was competing, which is not, readathons are not supposed to be a competition, guys. I don't think they're supposed to be a competition. Anyways, I started my booktube channel to participate in booktube last summer, and I had a great time. I had a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. But at the time, I was still only a half-time employee, and I didn't have the demands on my time and resources that I do now. And I wonder if that has changed the way I think about readathons because when you work five days a week and you're tired when you're home, sometimes you don't want to spend a bunch of time reading. Sometimes you just want to come home, eat dinner, and relax with your family and spend time with them. And reading is not necessarily something you do with people. So I don't know. So another thing I really enjoy about readathons that I wasn't even anticipating that I, that was a thing is how they push readers and like myself to read outside their comfort zones. The last two readathons I've participated in, Contemporaryathon, which was hosted by Chelsea and Julie, and Middle Gradeathon, which I co-hosted, both featured genres that I don't necessarily immediately go to. I don't really go to contemporaries very often unless they're romances or like contemporary retellings of classics. That's kind of where my limit was. So I really appreciated this readathon because it allowed me to experience contemporaries with people who love contemporaries and people who are new to contemporaries, but also to kind of have some guidelines to approach this really vast genre of literature. And it just was a great way to push myself outside my comfort zone, like I said, and I had a lot of fun with that readathon. The same goes for middle grade-a-thon. Middle grade is not my favorite genre that I have to read um, for my job. It's something where I'm very picky about what I read, but I enjoyed middle grade-a-thon a lot. I loved the challenges we picked. I liked how the challenges were broad and allowed you to pick different titles. And I also liked how with both of these readathons, the hosts were not very picky about what you picked. So those are the two things I really enjoy about readathons. The community aspect to them and the fact that they open you up to sometimes new genres or genres you may not be as familiar with and provide a really approachable way to get into those genres. So what don't I like about readathons? Well, I don't like that they sometimes feel a bit like a competition, even if it's just with yourself. I don't like that some of them become very much about reading all the books. I read very slowly. I also tend to like to take my time reading and I don't like how I feel a lot of pressure and this is on me. It's not necessarily something that's inherently bad about readathons but for me personally I don't like how I feel a lot of pressure when I, when I again, want to say compete. It's not a competition Erica. It's not a competition. I don't like how stressed out I get come about Thursday when I've only been, I'm only like, you know, 70% through the first book on my list. I, I don't like that aspect of readathons. This whole discussion and this whole idea about 
how I really feel about readathons came about because I co-hosted a readathon last week and by all intents and purposes if you look on the surface I completely failed at the readathon. I didn't complete one book. I didn't finish one text. I didn't start all the texts either. I didn't complete all the challenges. I, I just, even thinking about it, I get stressed out because I'm like, oh, I completely and totally failed and I was a co-host and oh gosh, I just, it makes me really anxious. But then I was thinking, no, it doesn't have to be thought of as a failure. It's not necessarily a failure. I started a book that I was really ambivalent and kind of like not interested in reading and have been opened up to an experience that I never would have even thought about in the ways that now I'm thinking about it. The book I'm talking about is George by Alex Gino, which is one of the two books, no, one of the three books I started for Middle grade -a I'm about, now I'm almost completely done with it, but at the end of Middle grade -a on December 9th, I was only about 70% through this one. Um, and I also started All Spare in Middle School and only got about 10 pages in. And then on Saturday? No, maybe Sunday. So maybe this one doesn't even count. I started Harry Potter. I didn't even get to Amina's voice, which I feel terrible about. I just left that experience feeling pretty hard on myself, pretty down in the dumps. I didn't feel very successful. I find that really discouraging because I think that readathons are supposed to be something that reinvigorate you as readers, that, that make you feel like you want to read more and more and more and more. And to a certain extent they do, if you have the time and the energy to be really committed to reading things and getting them done on time. Maybe I just am not that kind of person. I don't know. With contemporary -athon and middle grade -athon, both, by about Friday I was really stressing out because I was behind. I don't know how to fix that. I don't know how to not feel so much pressure when it comes to readathons. And of course, I could expand that and say pressure about booktube in general to do all the things. It takes a lot of time to do this, and I love doing it, but I don't have oodles and oodles and oodles of spare time to spend on this. I have, you know, a job and family and other things I enjoy doing with my time. Part of, I think, what is unique about booktube is that I don't anticipate um, a lot of hate from what I'm saying. I think based on the conversations I've been seeing going on in the last couple of weeks, a lot of people feel the way I do, where there's a lot of pressure to do so much stuff in terms of quantity. How many books you read, how many videos you're posting, how many readathons you're involved in, how many all the things, all the things, all the time. It can lead you to feeling kind of burned out, at least for me. So I don't know how to solve this yet. I'm still thinking about it. I don't think I'm gonna stop competing in readathons altogether, but I definitely think I'm going to continue to be pretty discerning about which readathons I participate in. I wanna participate in readathons where I kinda know the hosts already, or enjoy the host content if I don't talk to them directly. That's something that's kind of been since I started a uh, parameter. If someone I follow and have communicated with on booktube is hosting a readathon, I'll do their readathon, even if it's something I'm completely not as interested in looking at you guys, contemporary Athon hosts, because never would have done that if it hadn't been with people that I had been engaged with. I would like to participate in readathons that are more in tune with my personal reading taste, because one thing I think that also has happened is the readathons that I have participated in are outside my comfort zone, and then I miss the things I really like to read. It just creates kind of this weird spiral of, oh, what's the word? slump. So yeah, I guess this is kind of a response to Ariel's video about competitiveness because I do think that readathons, maybe if they're not necessarily competitive among booktubers, they make you really competitive within yourself, at least for me, and that's not necessarily the way I want to engage with booktube or with reading. It's a bit too much like school. I think that's another angle of readathons that is rubbing me the wrong way. I really, 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 really enjoyed Sylvia Kay's um, Cozyathon. I hope she does more because that was completely rooted in reading experiences rather than how many books you read or meeting specific like types of book challenges. I really appreciated it because it allowed me to just kind of read one book for the whole challenge, but I got to do a bunch of different things. Maybe we need to just have more challenges that are like that, that are focusing on the reading experience or sharing reading with others, and not so much how many titles you read or how many book challenges you meet. Maybe that would be a solution. 
I know I don't have time to create that readathon, but I'll keep an eye out. Overall, I don't think I'm going to give up on readathons, like I said, but I definitely think I won't be com competing. <sighs> So what do you guys think? Have you guys participated in readathons? Did you have a positive experience, a negative experience? Do you feel like you failed? I wish that I could feel like I didn't fail because I did actually meet several of the challenges because I started the books. And after all, the challenges say read a book. They don't say finish a book. Maybe that's at least for me where I need to go moving forward when I engage in readathons is instead of focusing on finishing the books, focus on reading them and being exposed to that and accepting that I probably won't finish all of them. It's very rare for me to do so and that's okay. Let me know what you think down below. If you have also been kind of considering these topics as, they, as they've been floating around booktube, I'd love to hear your thoughts either in a comment, in a video, whatever. I just am really curious. I am really enjoying this discussion because I do think that for a long time booktube has really focused on quantity and how many books you're reading over quality or finding books that you actually really enjoy. I hope that this means that booktube is going to become a little less focused on quantity and a little less consumeristic. That would be nice because it's an aspect of booktube that doesn't really appeal to me as much. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye guys. New genres. Lily, you're completely blocking the camera. Yeah.